Hi fellow shoppers, this is Rebecca, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Paul Rand inspired image. So when shooting for this uh, project, make sure that your model isn't wearing anything that's going to give away that she's not from the mid-century. So um, for this image, she has a towel on her head, which we did have in the mid-century, and she's got an older style phone instead of a cell phone, so she's going to work out perfectly. First thing I'm going to do is uh, unlock the background layer here by just clicking on the little lock icon on the layer in the layers panel. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. I'm going to go to layer, duplicate layer right there and hit OK. Now that I have a duplicate layer, I'm going to select the model here. Over here in the properties panel, because the layer is not locked, I can try to use this select subject. So I'm going to click on that and hit select subject. And I can see that some of her was not selected, but overall did a pretty good job. So I can use my um, quick selection tool here. Up in the when I click on it, up in the control panel, I can see the regular version, the add to selection, and the subtract from selection options. So I want to hit add to selection because I want these parts of the phone to be added in. So you can adjust the brush size of your quick selection tool with the bracket keys on your keyboard, and then just click and drag where you need to add to the selection. I think I'm also going to make this really tiny and add a little bit of these eyelashes in there. Okay, that looks good. I'm not gonna overdo it. And looks like the towel got selected, or a little bit of the towel isn't selected, and some of her fingernails. So there's that option. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can go up here to select a mask, and that will give you different views. If I look at my properties panel on the right side, I can choose different view modes to look at this in. So overlay is like a rubelisk view. You can choose the marching ants. You can choose on black, which is good for this image since there's a lot of white in it. If you have a really dark image, onion skin works nice or on white. And this black and white one doesn't really show me too much um, right now. Uh, so I would choose, I'm gonna choose the overlay today. And then from there, you can use the regular uh, quick selection tool that we just used. You can use this refine edge brush when I do this, I like to check Smart Radius in the Edge Detection section and pull my radius up a couple points. Ooh, that looks bad. So let's go ahead and pull it on back down. That didn't work out. But um, with the Refine Edge, you can just kind of paint over the edge, and a lot of times it will select things. This one's really hard because these objects that I'm selecting are pretty transparent. So it actually seems to be removing more than I want it to. But that's how that one works. <laughs> and I can go ahead now. I'm going to... Um, from here, if I wanted to add to the selection, I could choose the lasso or the polygonal lasso. I used to, I like to use the polygonal lasso because I have I feel like I have a lot of control. If you click and you make a selection that you don't mean to or your lasso gets out of control, just double click to close the shape and you can hit on Command Z to undo. So from there, I would click along the edge here. It's a bit hard to see, isn't it? And get that fingernail in there. and select it. Okay, not the greatest option. So let's go ahead, scroll on down to the bottom of this. We're gonna get out of this, um, this uh, select and refine window. So if you scroll to the bottom where it says output to, instead of output to selection, we're gonna choose output to layer mask and then hit okay. And that automatically adds a mask here in our layers panel to the layer we're working on. So let's add another layer right here by clicking on the Add Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'm going to click and drag to pull it to the bottom, and I'm going to name it Background. And then from there, I'm going to use my paint bucket. First, I'm going to pick a color. I want to choose like a creamy color for this, so I'm going to pull my spectrum to the orangey-yellow colors there. And this looks good to me. I, this My color here is FFE4AA if you want to copy that. But whatever you'd like to do and hit OK. And I'm going to hit Command-0 to zoom all the way out. I'm going to select all, Command-A, or you can go to select all at the top here. And just making sure my background layer is selected, I'm going to dump this color on there with my paint bucket. So the hotkey for that is G because that's in the gradient toolbox. And I just click and drag, 
click on it one time to drop in that color. So if I turn off these other two layers, I can see that color there, all right? So I just turned the visibility on the top layer with our mask, and now I can really see a lot better. So the visibility for my next layer down is off. Great, so now I'm gonna go ahead and paint these in with our um, uh, using black and white to paint on our mask itself. So wherever I do want things to appear in the image, I'm gonna paint with white. Wherever I don't want things to appear in the image, I'm gonna paint with black. So to get those fingernails back, I'm gonna click on the layer below it so I can see now. We just saw how the lasso tool works with selecting. I'm gonna show you how to do it with the pen tool. It's pretty neat. So I'm gonna click on this finger here and you just draw with the pen tool just like you would in Illustrator. I'm going to zoom in using Command Plus or Control Plus. I'm just going to trace her finger here. Now, if you see sort of a double line when you're zoomed in, that's just some extra pixels there. Don't worry too much about it because you're not going to see it when the image is zoomed out. So I just kind of ignore those. And this is creating a shape as we're drawing, but I'm going to show you how to turn it into a selection instead of a shape. If you need to change your stroke color or thickness because it's set to a strange default, you can do that up here um, in the control panel. Great. So I just closed my shape by hovering over that the starting uh, anchor point there. Great. So now to change this to a selection, go to Paths. If you don't have the paths uh, panel up, just go to window and then find paths. Then at the bottom of that window is the load path as a selection button. It's the third one from the left. And now I can click back on my layers, make sure that my mask is selected. You see the white outlines around it. And then from there, I'm going to um, click on these default colors to make my foreground white and my black round back. You can also just press the letter D on your keyboard to do that. I'm going to choose my paintbrush, my brush tool. You can hit B on your keyboard to um, select the brush tool. And I'm just going to paint over this. Doo, 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 doo. And now, if I turn the visibility off behind it, it is perfect. So that's really one of the best ways to select edges that are, um, you know, fairly straight lines. So I can do it again here. I'll just do. Let me actually, let me look at her arm and see how that's looking. Yeah, her arm's looking a little jagged over here. So we turn the visibility back on the layer below. This will be pretty quick because it's pretty straight line. And obviously you'll take the time to go around and do everything on your project. Let's do it the other way this time. So I'm going to select over here and select outside of her. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna to go to path and change the path loaded as a selection. Okay, and now, like I said, whatever's white will be in the image, whatever's black will not be in the image. So I'm gonna bring the back to black color from the background to the foreground by clicking on this little switcheroo or you can hit X on your keyboard. Select your brush again. I like to make my brush real big when I'm working with selections so I just don't have to take as many. There we go. So there's, I just um, made that edge nice and strong. Now I can go to select inverse, grab my white, bring it to the foreground by hitting X on my keyboard, and now brush on her arm and get that little, get everything to look nice and smooth. So I'll hit Command D to deselect, and that looks much better. So it's not, you know, showing every little hair on her arm or anything like that, but it's it's looking good. It's looking cut out like a Paul Rand style image. So um, I would go in here and, and uh, trim this out. And yeah, so just, just pay attention. That looks like some of the phone cord didn't get selected there, or maybe it, it did and it was painted or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so we got her. She's looking great. Next thing I'm gonna do is turn her to black and white. So let's go down to our adjustment layers here and choose black and white it's from the center of that menu. Great. So that black and white adjustment layer, that's applying that filter to everything below it. We just want it to apply it to the one layer with our layer mask. 
So to do that, hover between the two layers and hold down your Option or Alt key on your keyboard until your icon turns to this bent arrow with a little square. Then click one time with your mouse, and that applies it, as you can see, only to the layer below that. So that's great. Now with our on our black and white adjustment layer, we have it selected. Go ahead and go up to, what did I do? Okay, go up to the Properties panel here. You can choose the Auto button. That's usually a good place to start. It's not, let me try it again. Auto. Okay, yeah. So the auto plate auto button is a good place to start. I like to also um, I like this darker one for her. I think it looks really nice. So there's that. Then let's go ahead and adjust our levels. So I'm going to go back to my adjustment layers um, icon at the bottom of the layers panel, and I'm going to choose levels. So levels is one of my favorite adjustment layers to use. I like to use it to color correct. When I have a color image, I'll click on this white eyedropper here and I'll click on the whitest part of the image and it will automatically correct that. It looks so nice. But um, when I'm working with black and white, I will use this histogram here. So I'm gonna grab my white slider and slide it on over. It looks like it's applying to everything below. So I only want it to apply to that one layer. So I'm gonna hit Option or Alt and hover between those two layers and click one time with my mouse. Now when we slide, it's only adjusting her, so that's good. So I don't want to go so far where I blow out all my highlights and white areas. I want to see a lot of texture still in that towel. So that looks nice. I can still see highlights in her teeth, so that looks really good. But then we have to adjust the other way too to get some really beautiful contrast. So grab the black slider to the left there, slide it to the right, and we see her eyelashes and get a little denser. The shadows get darker and richer and her hair gets darker, it looks really nice. So um, you don't have to go too far with the black to really see a lot of nice contrast and difference. Okay, great, so that's levels and black and white. Next thing we're gonna do is color this phone. So what we could have done is just left the phone out of our black and white mask and use the color that existed. That's one way of doing it. But we wanna make it look like Paul Rand who hand colored those things. So for this, I'm gonna just turn off the visibility of that layer and turn on the visibility of layer zero. We see the full background because we haven't masked anything out yet, right? So let's zoom in on that phone. I'm hitting Command Plus and then I'm just holding down my space bar to activate the hand tool to move my canvas around. I'm gonna choose this quick selection tool. We can choose object select, let's try that first. The object selection is pretty fun. So um, that's within the same toolbar as the quick selection, I'm sorry, same tool drawer as the quick selection tool. So you can just click on the object. You can hold down shift to select some more stuff. Um, it's not gonna select those that coil there. So I'll use the quick selection tool to add to this selection there. Let me zoom on in to see how it's looking. Looking pretty good, okay. I'll hold down my shift key. I'm sorry, yeah, I can hold down the shift key to add the coil to it and just click along. I'm just making little additions because I don't want it to grab too much stuff. And I can go back in with my subtract from selection tool and get in there, but I could be fighting with that thing all day. So from that, for now, we're just gonna mask this out. So make sure that you have your um, layer zero selected there and we're gonna make a mask out of this. So go ahead and click on that. Oop, great. Now the problem is when we turn this visibility back on, we're not gonna see that layer anymore. So we need to pull layer zero up above our levels layer. And now we can see that. Cool. And let's go ahead and just fix our mask by doing the painting. I won't spend too much time on this because now you know how to do it. So we've got our black and white. Uh, where we paint with white will Oops, I don't have my mask selected. So I had the image selected. So where we paint with white, we'll mask it in. Let me bring the black to the foreground. Looks like I'm adding too much paint there. Okay. And we want black to be painted in these coils here. So just to brush, to adjust your brush sizes however you need it to mask out what you don't want. Do, 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 and on and on. 
So there's more down here, but I'm just gonna let it be for now. I see I say it and then I keep going. <laughs> All right, let me just get that guy. Okay. And this guy here. Yeah. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna show you a cool thing. As you can see, we've got this blue phone. I don't want it blue, I want it to look painted. So I'm gonna hover over the layer mask. I'm gonna hold down my command key and click one time. That's gonna load a selection, okay? So from there, I can turn off the visibility of that layer. So now I just have my black and white stuff selected. The reason why I selected the phone from a second color layer is because it's easier to use these uh, quick selection and subject selection tools when the image is in color. There's more contrast and things for um, the software to you know, find edges of when you don't have the whole image grayed out, okay? So from there, let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm just gonna click on the add a layer button and layer one pops up at the top. And we're gonna paint this um, selection here with red. So I'm gonna click on my foreground color. I want my slider to be either all the way at the top or all the way at the bottom. And I'm gonna choose the tippy top red which is FF0000 and hit OK. And then from there, use my brush, make it real big, boom, using my bracket keys. And I'm just gonna brush right onto that phone. This is of course, after you get your mask perfect, right? And I'm gonna hit deselect. Now it doesn't look quite right. It's pretty, pretty uh, opaque. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my blending mode here by clicking on this menu that says normal and make sure my layer one selected. And I'm going to choose multiply. And now that looks like a Paul Rand style, doesn't it? It looks pretty great. 